Great. I'm going to go ahead and uh, call to order this meeting of the Monroe County Board of Commissioners. It's August 12, 2020. And uh, we are all present and accounted for, uh, Commissioner Jones, Commissioner Githens, and myself. And uh, we'll begin with the public statement read today by Commissioner Jones, please. Thank you. We, the Monroe County Board of Commissioners, renew our commitment to welcome and protect the rights of all people, regardless of age, race, color, creed, disability, sexual orientation, gender, gender identity, marital status, economic status, and national origin. And we affirm the right of every person to live peacefully and without fear, and we will fight and resist at every step discrimination and harmful policies, whatever their source. We also stand in support of our county public school systems, both RBB and MCCSC. Thank you, Commissioner Jones, I appreciate that. Uh, and next we will turn to our departmental updates. We'll begin with the health department. Good morning, Ms. Cottle. Ms. Dayton, she's still muted. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. I, I, it feels good to, to be back. I was away for a week, and um, so it's good to be back and appreciate the opportunity to give the few updates that I have. I don't have a whole lot this week. The Optum site is going to uh, still be around the community offering testing through September at least. Um, yesterday, they did 291 tests, and that's actually a little bit lower. They have been doing over 300 tests a day, and their throughput that they're expected to do is only about 130. So they are doing exceptionally well with the number of tests that, and people that they are getting through that site. So we're very pleased that they will be remaining in our community at least until the end of September. Um, our new complaint system is up and going, and that started on the 31st, and so far we've had a little over 50 complaints filed through that system. We are still getting some that are coming through email and, and phone, so we do encourage people to go to the website and use that new system. The link is right there on the county's webpage, so it makes it very easy to do. There is a phone number if you don't have that access. You can call 812-803-6360 and leave the information and then staff will enter that. But again, online is the fastest, most efficient way to do that at the moment. And our new staff are being trained this week. And so um, we've had current staff who have been processing those and working through the system so that we can uh, make sure that as we bring new staff on, we've worked through some of those initial kinks and processes. So I think that next week when they're up and on board, they'll be doing additional trainings as well as handling those complaints for their first week or so. And then uh, we'll see how many uh, complaints and, and how much time is needed. And then we'll add additional duties um, as, as we have time to allow them to do those. Uh, so again, we do encourage people, if you have a complaint to file about a business not uh, following the protocols, then please use that online service. And that's really my updates for this week, just coming back and getting caught back up. Great, thank you, Ms. Cottle. Um, questions or comments, uh, Commissioner Jones? No, not right now. Commissioner Githens? No, I've been encouraged to see people out in the community wearing their masks. That's true. I agree. That's true. And that's going to make a big difference as students start coming back. Um, so that's a good point. Excellent. Thank you so much, Ms. Caudill. We appreciate you. I'm glad you had a break. Thank you. All right. Um, now we turn to emergency management. Uh, Allison Moore. Good morning. Uh, as I announced last week, we are um, have a blood drive scheduled, and it is scheduled for August 24th. There are still spots available. 
uh, it's my understanding that Commissioner Githens has made an appointment to donate again. So kudos to her and anyone else in the community that um, has access and would like to make that donation. We very much appreciate that. And you can register by appointment for um, for your space and your, your allowed time for COVID purposes at the redcross.org website. And we are going to have additional blood drives scheduled at least one every month through the calendar year 2020. Um, we are super close to having those dates secured, um, but shuffling some things around the convention center and such. And so we will have those dates again very soon. We continue to shuffle supplies around in our community and uh, make sure that we have supplies on hand for our first responders and for our, any of our residents in Monroe County that might need face coverings, shields, or masks. We have those available. There are locations on our county website where you can go and make an appointment to pick up those supplies or to stop at the courthouse on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays between nine and three and pick those up. Um, our office continues to work closely with our health department to serve. Uh, we shuffled some gowns around yesterday to have those for our nursing homes. Um, just an example of some of the things that we do and we will continue to do that. Um, but also our, our office is currently starting to get into a very new normal and uh, we're working on grants and more normal things as opposed to COVID. So we continue to make sure that we have our supplies and we're very focused on COVID, but we're also really pouring in and shifting into our new norm. And so that's exciting for us, a little challenging at first to figure out, but uh, how we can tackle both worlds, um, but it's but it's working well. So just to report that positiveness that we are getting back into that new norm. Very good, thank you, Ms. Moore. Um, questions, comments, Commissioner Jones? Commissioner Giffins? Um, I wanna thank the convention center for hosting these blood drives. Um, it's, it's a really, it's working really well, but also I was gonna ask Ms. Moore to um, repeat what she had shared with us about uh, the Red Cross is what the Red Cross said about the county blood drives. Sure, they expressed to us how successful they have been, especially on the back end um, with staff from the convention center, staff from our office, um, the volunteers that we have in our community, how successful it has been. Um, we've had people in other blood drives across the community um, that have signed up for those spots and then they haven't been filled. Those people haven't arrived. We've had very successful blood drives with, per with very great attendance. Um, the percentages has been very successful. And then all of the planning that goes into it, um, it's pretty extensive. And they said that we have definitely been one of the best and they actually reached out to us and said can we have more blood drives with you because they are so successful and and we are very excited for that and happy to help the red cross and of course help our community so it's been a very win-win for our community and i know that our department's very glad that we are a part of it awesome excellent work yeah that's that's kudos 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 um, and just a reminder to the public about other things emergency management has to deal with even when there's a COVID pandemic. Uh, we had a bit of weather the other night. We did, we did. We were up most of the evening dealing with dispatch and of course our highway, I'm sure Ms. Ridge is gonna step up and, and report some of that as well. We had several trees down, several roads closed. Um, some of those roads were closed an extensive length of time because of power lines that were down. We have to work with our energy companies um, and coordinate best practices for getting energy back up and running for everyone to have power at this time as well. Um, we have to make sure we get those alerts out and that they're out in a timely manner. And we work with the National Weather Service to assure that that's happening. And sometimes there are glitches um, and we have to assure that those glitches were either human error that needs to be corrected or that we have all of our programs in place to make sure that those notices go out properly. And so it's very important to us to make sure we have everything in place and such. And so it has been a challenging week. It was a long, long night a couple nights ago, but again, yes, we continue to do those things as well. Yeah, absolutely. But we didn't have any reports of any, um, obviously no fatalities, but no injuries even, nothing serious. And, and um, so that's a really good thing. And, and we appreciate your hard work all throughout the year. Sure, no problem, thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Moore. Uh, now we'll turn to Ms. Rich. Morning. Can you Good morning. Me? So Allison's right. So we were going to pave this week, but we have been doing storm cleanup. Um, I know um, Toby, the highway superintendent, had um, three crews out all night 
um, with three grade alls opening roads. I believe at one time they had a report of 38 different locations with trees um, crossing the road. So um, kudos to all of the guys that worked um, over all night long to get the roads back open before morning. So we will move to Swartz Ridge Road next week for paving since it was backed off this week due to the storms. So if you have any questions. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, questions, comments, Commissioner Jones? Yeah, I, when trees come down, there's always the issue of just who's responsible for just what. And this might be a good idea to remind the community of that. So we've been working with the legal department about getting the tree policy um, kind of written up for the county. Um, basically, if it's a hazard to the traveling motorist, it is the county highway's responsibility. If it's not a hazard um, to the traveling motorist, it's my understanding that it's up to the property owner to take care of their tree on the property. Thank you so much. Commissioner Giffins. No, just thanks for being out there. I mean, your crews are expected to work whenever there's a need and, and it's really nice that, they, that they're there. They, they put in a lot of hours and with the uh, limited staff and try to get positions filled. Uh, so yeah, uh, big kudos to all the guys out there. Yeah, it it's, uh, takes a lot of coordination and we appreciate all the hard work and please do extend, as, uh, as was said, please extend our thanks to uh, the crews and to um, uh, Toby as well. We, we appreciate the hard work and, and I know our residents do too. Um, so that's, that's huge. All right, excellent. All right, with that, um, I don't see, are there any other departments that have an update for us today? It looks like there are no hands raised. All right, thank you, Ms. Dayton. Um, and with that, we will move on to public comment. This is public comment for items that are not on our agenda. Uh, time is limited to three minutes and um, you will hear a um, audio uh, warning when you have 30 seconds remaining. So at the two minute, 30 second mark, you will hear a noise. Ms. Dayton. There we go. Thank you, Ms. Dayton. That was like magic. Um, and so that that when you hear that, you have 30 seconds remaining. Um, and so we will open this up for public comment for items not on our agenda. All right, first up, we have Alex Goodlatte. Great. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Oh. Goodlatte. Good morning, Julie. Good morning, Lee. And good morning, Penny. Um, so, um, I just want to talk about kind of the um, just kind of the future as we move on to um, the uh, you know 2021 uh, budget considerations. Um, as as I'm sure uh, you've heard us kind of articulate before, um, I support in principle not just less funding for um, the police but the criminal justice system. You know, in general, like. Um, you know, prisons and, 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 and kind of the components of our criminal justice system that are very punitive and, you know, very wrong and very cruel. Um, and so uh, needless to say, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to expect that, um, that, you know, not just me, but, you know, the other voices, especially BIPOC voices are part of the discussion and consideration of the budget. So um, all of this is to say that we're going to, we're going to make you work. Um, and I know that I, I heard you, Julie, yesterday talk about um, how you feel that, you know, your part-time work or what's treated as part-time work isn't fairly compensated. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I can, you know, I've, I've, I've bullied you for a long time. So, you know, um, you might find it ironic to, to, for me to say that, yeah, you know, if you're going to work full time, especially if you're going to have to, to, to deal with us who don't really like you guys. Um, you know, I, I would, I would be inclined to support your pay raise. Cause you know, I believe in fair labor at the end of the day. Um, though, you know, the, the condition for that support is that you guys do your jobs and that you hear what we have to say and, and, and consider our, our demands. Um, 
And, uh, you know, thanks for, uh, thanks for listening and, and I, yield, I yield my time. Thank you, Mr. Goodland. Is there anyone else uh, in the, uh, for public comment? Or items not on our agenda? Uh, looks like there aren't any more hands. Great, thank you so much, Ms. Dayton. We appreciate you. And we'll now move on to the next item on our agenda, please. Move to approve the minutes for August 5th, 2020. Second. We have a motion and we have a second. Any comments, uh, questions, or edits? No. See, seeing none, um, Mr. Cockrell, will you please call the roll on the approval of the minutes for August 5th, 2020? Yes, uh, Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner Githens. Yes. Minutes are approved three to zero. Thank you, sir. Uh, next item, please. Move approval of claim stocket accounts payable August 5th, 2020 and payroll August 14th, 2020. Second. We have a motion and we have a second. Uh, Mr. Miller, good morning. Good morning, commissioners. Uh, I'd like to start off by saying uh, that date should actually be August 12th for the accounts payable. Um, However, the total for the claims ah, was yeah. oh sorry, yeah. but uh, total for claims was five million two hundred ten thousand seven hundred seventeen dollars and seventy six cents. Uh, over half of that was for distribution of public safety lit and uh, lit, which was three million four hundred fifty six thousand six hundred seventy eight dollars and ninety two cents. Uh, six hundred twenty three thousand one hundred eighty seven dollars and seventy cents was for Anthem, Blue Cross, and Blue Shield. Uh, July and August fees and claims, and $272,531.24 was also for distribution, uh, which was for wheel and surtax for June. As far as payroll, the total was $1,534,910.82. Uh, $1,082,599.36 were for the main and supplemental payroll direct costs, and the remaining $452,000. $311.46 were for the payroll claims, which primarily consisted of taxes and perks. All right, thank you, Mr. Miller. Comments or questions for Mr. Miller? Commissioner Jones? Commissioner Giffins? No. Okay. Thank you so much. Is there any public comment on this item? There are no hands raised. Thank you, Ms. Dayton. Uh, with that, uh, Mr. Cockrell, will you please call the roll on accounts payable August 12th and payroll August 14th, 2020? Yes, Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner Githens. Yes. Uh, motion is approved three to zero. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you, Mr. Miller. All right, we'll move on to our sole order of new business. Move to approve in that agreement for Rockport Road number 308, fund name, cumulative bridge, fund number 1135, in the amount of $320,700. Second. We have a motion and a second, and we have Ms. Ridge to tell us all about this. So, um, so we are uh, scheduled for construction of fiscal year 2025 for this contract. It's an 80-20 split within that. And this part of the contract is for preliminary engineering uh, to begin the design of the bridge, the new bridge. Right, thank you so much. Um, I will note that the state's portion is 256,560 and the local is uh, portion is 64,140. Excellent. Uh, comments or questions, uh, Commissioner Jones? Just that it sounds like this is a good project that this bridge uh, probably really needs some work. Absolutely. Uh, Commissioner Giffens. I was surprised that it, it we're planning for so far out. Uh, and then when I was looking through things, it says if X happens, it'll happen in 2025 and if Y happens, it might be till 2027. What are those decision points? 
lot of a lot of that has to do with right of way. And, and so securing the right of way. Um, so there's a lot of negotiating going back and forth. They at least allow a year for right of way acquisition. Um, and then you'll go back and forth with the property owners with negotiations. Um, and then they also play into a factor if you had to go to condemnation. If you have what? If you have to go to condemnation, if you cannot reach oh, okay. agreement. Right. I just didn't hear the, the last part of it. Thank you. Yeah. We, we need to get you a better microphone, Ms. Ridge. <laughs> well, I had a laptop and a new laptop, but I couldn't get it connected to the wireless. <laughs> We'll get you, we'll get you fixed up. <laughs> Sounds like you're talking from a soup can. <laughs> but you did well because you you articulate well, so we're good. All right. Um, <laughs> any um, public comment uh, or questions on this item? There are no hands raised. Thank you, Ms. Dayton. Uh, Mr. Cockrell, will you please call the roll on the in dot agreement for Rockport Road Bridge 308? Uh, yes, Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner Githens. Yes. Uh, contract is approved three to zero. Thank you so much. Uh, and thank you, Ms. Ridge. Um, so uh, we do have a number of announcements. We do not have any appointments today. Um, but speaking of appointments, uh, there are um, going to be a number of openings uh, for 2021 on our boards and commissions. So. Take a look uh, at the website, co.monroe.in.us. Take a look at the uh, boards and commissions. Um, some of them do allow city residents, most do not, um, and I'm town residents as well. Um, and um, see what looks interesting to you. You can look at the minutes um, and you can always contact any of us if you have questions. Um, but we're really going to be talking a lot more about how important it is to um, apply for those boards and commissions uh, in the next several weeks. Um, and we'll list some very specific ones that we know we need uh, to fill. Um, county buildings are open by appointment. Uh, please contact the department you wish to visit. Um, yes, indeed, face coverings are required inside county buildings, uh, but we will provide those for you. Just let us know. Um, and there are uh, face coverings available to the public at a number of locations. If you go to the emergency management page on our website, you will see the list. And that includes um, the uh, door of the north door of the courthouse where uh, Ms. Dina DeLauder Myers is handing out um, face shields and face masks to those who need them. Um, but also she's handing out these great, uh, this is a large version, uh, decals for local businesses um, for local businesses and social service agencies who would like to put uh, a decal on their door to ensure that all their visitors are properly attired. Um, and uh, those decals are also available at Downtown Bloomington Inc. and the Chamber of Commerce for Bloomington. Um, as uh, many of you know, but it's worth reiterating, the county is making CARES funding available to uh, businesses throughout the county and social service organizations to reimburse them for non-payroll expenses that they uh, took on additional expenses related specifically to COVID. <clears throat> These expenses must not have been covered elsewhere, for example, like a PPP loan or a city loan or a county grant, um, but visit uh, co.monroe.in.us for the web form and the information about submitting a claim. Um, and as Ms. Caudill noted, um, there is a complaint form available on the homepage of our website um, for folks to file um, a complaint about an event or a business that is not following the county's health order. Um, and um, also you will find um, the uh, link to an application to um, exceed the event limit, event number, gathering size limitations for events. Um, you will find that form on our website as well. Uh, also, while you're on our website, make sure you sign up for the resident alert system. Uh, so when there's a new health order or severe weather that you receive um, a text, an email, you pick um, how you prefer to be contacted. Uh, and some of our water 
companies in the county also use this system for boil orders. So it's, it's a great system to have um, and it will keep you um, um, aware of what's going on in our community on a very timely basis. Uh, with the end of the moratorium on evictions um, and utility disconnections, residents are encouraged to reach out to their township trustee. Every county resident has a township trustee, uh, whether you live in the city or not. And um, the commissioners are proud to have worked with the council to provide additional funding for township uh, trustees to provide assistance for those in need. Um, and uh, so if you are uh, looking at um, the bills that are coming in and you're, you're struggling uh, with employment, especially with COVID, uh, please um, contact your trustee and get some help. Uh, the sooner you contact them, the better. Um, they have a lot of resources in addition to uh, this additional assistance fund that we um, set up in county government. Uh, we do wanna thank those who wear their face coverings regularly um, and also for those who have been donating blood. And um, it's, these are the kinds of things that make this a wonderful community and it, a special place. And that's you know, when we ask people to wear face coverings, it is, a, it is a sign that you care about your community, you care about the economy, the local economy. We don't wanna go backwards. So please, please, please uh, wear your face coverings, practice. Um, uh, physical distancing and keep washing those hands. Uh, we've got, um, you know, students coming back soon and, and we really, we, we need to set a good example. Um, so, but for those who are doing, doing the, um, the face coverings, uh, wearing those face coverings, we appreciate that. Uh, anything else from my colleagues that I may have overlooked? Oh, I did notice that you, you, didn't mention that Dina will only be at the north door passing out the um, masks and flyer on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 11 no. to 9 to 4. 9 to, Nine four. to 4. Yeah, yeah. Good, good. Can't hear you, Penny. Um, she has a special office set up there inside the door. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, I, I wanted to let folks like Jim Shelton know who's so involved with um, social service agencies that United Way is planning to do a fourth round of funding. Um, and that, that's not something that you forgot, uh, Commissioner Thomas, you didn't know about it. So I just wanted to share that with people. No, that's great. Uh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad for United Way and and all of the area agencies that are helping folks out day to day. It's it's Again, that's what makes our community special. It really does in these really unspecial times. <laughs> um, all right. Um, anything else for the good of the order? All right. With that, we're going to adjourn the meeting.